and welcome to Faith Works Design. I'm Faith and today we're going to be picking up back where we left off on our diaper bag. Today we're going to be starting with the zipper part. And it's fairly easy if you've seen any of my other cloth diaper videos. Um, the construction part of it is pretty easy and I've explained it in a little more detail on those. But I, I try and go step by step on this one as well. So let's grab up our materials again and get started. All right, now we're working on the zipper part. And what I did was I took my top fabric, this fabric, and I measured from right about here all the way around to the other side and then um, cut it out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the leather on the bottom. Um, so I'm just going to do the top part right this second and attach it to the zipper. And I'm also going to be putting on my lining. So if you've ever put a zipper on or a bag or something like that, um, if you watch my cloth diaper pod um, videos, you can tell how I've done this as well. But you get your fabric that you're going to have for your zipper. This is going to be your top fabric. And then you get your zipper, this right side. So with the little um, pull here is the right side. Put that on top of the right side of your fabric. Then you're going to grab your lining fabric and you're going to put that right on top and sew all the way down to whatever your measurement is. So let's So my battery died and I had to get a new one. So basically what I did was I did uh, the top and the lining on one side, which you were able to see, uh, but then I did the second side. I did everything exactly the same, but now I have two different sides and I did it on the other side of the zipper. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one side of my purse, take the zipper part, line it up about here. Uh, pin all the way around till here and then I'm going to start working uh, I'm going to remeasure the bottom half again um, and then get a piece cut out and then uh, the same width as my zipper so as wide as this is I'm going to cut that out and start quilting it and then I'm going to put both of them together quilt it she said it'll be fun she said you see all of this this is so much fun to quilt when you're working on leather or even the fake leather because it all pushes it down as you sew. So you've got all of this going on right here and then all of this going on right here. So we're going to have to do some adjustments, but it's still going to be fun. Set down, I quilted the bottom and then I quilted the zipper part, which is a little bit harder than I thought it was going to be. So if you want to, it'd be a lot easier to just um, pre-quilt your fabric before you start attaching it. Now I've seen persons where they have them um, quilted after they've attached it. And I thought it was pretty cool. So I wanted to at least try it. I'm learning a few more things as I'm doing this and it was for the most part it worked out like it was supposed to. Um, so I'm pretty happy. Now I want to show you the pieces that I have ready to go. So there's the bottom. This is going to be attached from here to here on the bottom. And then our zipper is going to go from here all the way around to here. I wanted to give her a really nice um, opening to be able to put things in and out. Um, she's got several kids so I'm sure she's going to be carrying more than just stuff for the baby. 
So I wanted to give her a lot of opening. Now, the next thing that we're going to do before we move on to the next thing is I'm going to grab our lining. This is our lining fabric. It's not attached to anything and it's not quilted. I know, but it'll be all right. So for the lining, I want to do at least one pocket. And I thought that would be cool to show you guys. And then I thought maybe like a, a row of pockets on the other side. I'm still debating, but you will see as soon as I make up my mind, <laughs> I'll show you what I'm doing. All right, so I think this is going to be my last step for today because it is quitting time and I've got some people to feed. So I've cut out my pockets. I decided that I wanted to make it uh, about six and a half um, high. I wanted it to be nice and deep for her. Um, but once I get everything cut, it'll probably be more like six and a half. We'll see. But there's plenty of room left up here for the bag part. Uh, I'm debating on quilting this. I know, I know. I think it would be really neat if I went ahead and quilted this so that it matched the outside. We'll see. When I get done with that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, sew lines down. Maybe give her about three pockets. Maybe just one in the middle. I'll decide once I get done with the quilting part of it. Um, and then when I'm done, I'm going to use this as a binding at the top. And then I will sew this down to the back side of my lining. So make sure you do your quilting or whatever you're going to do first. Use this as your binding on the top of your pocket. And then sew where you want your pockets to go. And that is going to be it for today. And tomorrow we'll pick up with a zipper and hopefully start putting things together. All right, so I'm working with the lining fabric, and then what I did was I cut an 8 by 11 rectangle, and so my 8 inches is going this way. I just found a nice spot where I would want the zipper to sit, and then what I did was you put an inch at the top, an inch on the sides, and then you make your line from the inch at the top, and then you come down at a half an inch, okay? And then you make these little triangles right here. And then in the middle of those triangles, you connect them by this line. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew around the outside of this rectangle. Don't bother with the inside. We just sew around the outside first. And then I'll show you what to do next. All right, so after I did that, Sew it around all the edges, and then you remember that line that was right in the middle? I cut that all the way down, and then I cut it at the notches. So you see I cut the notches out so that the little triangle is there. And then what you do is you take this fabric and you shove it in like that, and then you're going to iron it down as best you can so that you don't see the inside fabric, you just see the outside fabric. You do the best you can. I got a little bit peeking out there. That's when um, using the same type of fabric would make it um, look a little bit better, but I wanted the pocket to have the pink. All right, so that's the start of your inside pocket. Uh, most purses have like one zipper and then a side pocket, and that's kind of what I'm opting for right this second. So then you grab your zipper, and then you put it underneath there like so with, there we go, the, um, y'all know what that's called, the pull, there we go, with a little pull peeking out so you can see it. And what you're going to do is you're going to go through and pin this down so that it will not move and then get your zipper foot out and then sew all the way around. All right, that part is done. We've got the zipper all ready where it can go back and forth. And then you can kind of see your lining in here. And then if I turn it over, you can see what I've done. And we'll take you real close. So all of this is separate. It's not sewn down to the lining. So you go all the way up here, all the way over here, come on down, all of this is just up. It's not sewn to your lining. So you just do three sides and that makes your little pocket and you've got a zipper in your purse. Now I went ahead 
And I know I was going back and forth on this, but I went ahead and I quilted my pocket because it just didn't seem right to not do it. So quilted the pocket and what I did is I went ahead and just did a seam right down the middle so she can have some pretty large pockets um, for some of the stuff that she's going to need. And then what I did was I pinned the side so all of this will just stay still while I'm getting ready to put everything together. I rounded out the corners so they all match so when I line them up with the other stuff it'll line up really nicely. So I've got both of my inside linings. I've got both of my outside um, fabrics done. Now it's going to be time to put everything together. Alright, so we're on day three. I did a few things last night to just kind of catch up and the lighting was kind of stinky so I figured I'd just show it to you this morning. Um, hopefully, fingers crossed, we're going to get this done today. So here's what I did last night. Alright. So you've seen the front, you've seen the piping. What I did to make my job a little bit easier when I go to put everything together, I went ahead and took the lining and I attached it to the outside of my purse. I went all the way around the edges and just kind of sewed everything together and that way I don't have to fight with the lining and the top part and just trying to keep everything straight. I just went ahead and attached it all around the edges. You can probably see um, just attaching everything and that way it's not moving around and giving me a fit. And then I took the two outside fabrics. They're going to be joining up right here on this side. I wanted the flower print to be on this side and then the leather to be on this side. So what I did was I joined, here's the top part with the zipper. I went ahead and did the, the spot where the um, tab thing goes and then this side. On the other side I went ahead and put the lining fabric together with this and then if you can see I, I sewed it together and then I laid it out flat and then I cut off my excess uh, fabric and as much of the bulk as I could. And then what I did was I now I have pinned um, just a piece of fabric over top of it. Let me undo this real quick so you can see what I did. So I sewed these together and then I cut the seam down really good. And I sewed this while it was like this. And then it's almost like bi uh, binding. That's what we're going to be doing for the rest of the inside of the purse. And so I'm just going to put that there and then I'm going to stitch it down. And then I'm going to start pinning it on here. And then when I get about all of this pinned on, maybe even sewn on, I'm going to stop and do just like you do with a quilt. And join these sides and do the same thing on that side as I'm doing on the other side. All right, so now what I've done is I have sewed the bottom to the front side. So like your sides all the way around and it turned out really nicely and I'm so happy with how everything matched up like it was supposed to. Phew, I can breathe a little bit. Okay, now what I did is I got some two and a half inch um, strips of the inside fabric and I fold it in half just like you would with like a quilt. Fold it in half and I sewed it all around the edges and now what I'm doing is I'm flipping it over like that and I'm going to pin it all the way around and then I'm going to sew, they call it stitch in the ditch, you're just going to sew right along there so that this binding is there and you don't see any of these rough edges. Alright so the binding is all done so when you look on this one side on the inside of the diaper bag. That is what you're going to see all the way around. It's nice and bound and it just looks really professional and I love it. So now it's time to put the other All right guys, we're on the last bit of binding. You can see all the hairs come down. All right, it is thick. I was like, let's just do piping and quilting and add a pocket that's quilting on the inside because that won't take up very much room. Alright, do you see how thick this is? <laughs> Note to self, next time, it's a little bit thinner up here, but back here is where all the business is and it's really super thick, so I'm having to take my time and force my sewing machine to go through it. 
So the very last thing I have to do is just fold this over and then pray that I can sew through all of these layers and then we're done. All right, friends, she is almost done and she is gorgeous. The only thing we have left to do is the upper straps. That is it. Thank goodness. Okay. That is what one side looks like, and I'm going to take you on a trip on the inside. Now, you remember we did the zipper for one side, and then we put this binding all around the inside, and as you can see, it is completely bound, so there are no raw edges. She's got some really nice big pockets in here to deal with, and I put the zipper going down as far as I could on both sides, that way she could kind of get in here, have it open pretty wide, and get in and out what she needs to get in and out fairly quickly with all of her little ones. So let me see if I can get this side real quick. This is the plainer of the two, but I still love it so much. So what I did to figure out what size straps I wanted, I took my tape measure and put it across and tried my best to get it even on both sides and see if that feels comfortable or not. And then what you can do is you can cut them out just like we did the other straps. All right, so we're gonna cut it for today, literally and figuratively. Um, I'm gonna quit for today because it's a little later than I wanted and there's dinner and people to feed and all of that. Um, if the binding hadn't taken me so long, I probably could have finished this today, but with it being so thick and it just being a butt, it just didn't happen. So, sometimes it's a really good idea when you're tired to just stop. Don't keep forcing something to happen because when you, you're tired and you force it to happen, you tend to make mistakes and you tend to have things happen that you're just like, why? <laughs> sometimes it's good to know when to just stop, take a break, start again tomorrow when you're fresh, and tomorrow all I have to do is the straps. I just kept messing up on the binding and it was really just getting me in a funky mood. So I was like, you know what, I'm just going to stop. Tomorrow I will get it going again. Um, I do want to show you what I've done. Hopefully you can see that. I took two strips that were 2 inches wide by 28 inches long. And what I did was I put the right sides together, I sewed down one end, and then I turned it inside outwards and sewed down the other end. And now what I'm going to do tomorrow is I'm going to turn a quarter of an inch in on this side, a quarter of an inch in on that side, and then sew all the way down, and I will have my straps, and then all I'll need to do is attach them to the purse, and we'll be all done. All right. If anything didn't make sense, or if you're sitting there like, I don't know what she did, in the comment section, all you gotta do is say, Faith, I didn't understand what you did X, Y, and Z, and I will do my best to explain it. So hopefully, hopefully though, most of it made sense. If you're also struggling with making your own purse just because of some of the basics of making a purse, it's probably a good idea to go get a pattern. Try the pattern and see if it's something that you like or not. Sometimes it's best to start out with a pattern just so that you get to know the ins and outs, how to put a zipper in, how to do, um, you know, turning it inside outwards, how to do lining, how to do uh, binding. Um, some patterns don't call for binding. Some of them call for you to make the inside and the outside completely separate and then attach them at the zipper part and turn them inside out. I know that was a whole mouthful, but that's the stuff that happens. So sometimes it's good to start with a pattern and sometimes it's good just to try your own and see what happens. You never know. So I'm going to quick cut off for today and then I will pick up again tomorrow when I'm all fresh and ready to go and then um, that way I can take pictures during the daylight and everything will be great. Okay, so there was food involved and energy was regained because I was kind of putting myself on a deadline. I took an hour or two off just to relax, chill, think about what I wanted to do because more or less the problem I was having was with the straps after the binding issue. Um, so having a second to think about, okay, well how am I going to apply them? How am I going to put them on? How am I going to make them? All that stuff. So here we go. She is all done. Thank goodness. All right. So you've got your little wet white pod thing there in the front. And then you've got your straps nice and long. 
And in the back, I see the straps a little bit better. Oops, and now she's gonna fall over. And she's all done. So I wanted to make this video for several reasons. One, my customers like seeing my stuff kind of get made. I thought it would be cool for them to be able to watch a video of their particular item getting made. Two, I thought it'd be really cool to hopefully inspire some of you guys to, instead of going out and just buying something and not necessarily being completely happy with it, that you would consider watching, consider learning, hopefully you learn something, um, on how to make your own purse and make it your own. You, whenever you make something or you do something and it, you put forth so much effort, you appreciate it so much more. And so hopefully you wanted to watch that and um, be able to make your own diaper bag or be able to make your own purse so that when you have that thing, it just means so much more to you. And it's exactly the way that you want it because you want a pocket or you want a zipper or you want this or you want that. Hopefully it inspired you to, to get creative and, and make it special for yourself and it'll probably last you a lot longer. Um, if you... If you've lasted this long, you probably like the video, hopefully. If you want to subscribe and hang around, if you want to, I'm going to be having more videos like this as I get in orders. Um, next week we're going to be starting the reusable items, my scrubby pads and stuff like that. Christmas is coming, and a lot of those items are really nice to be able to give to family members, and it's not exactly like super expensive, but you can make them and you can create them, and they'd really appreciate getting them. So tune in for that. If you hit the subscribe button, you'll be notified when that comes on. If you have any questions or any comments, you can just leave them in the comment section below, and I'll get to those as soon as I can. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope I've inspired you to at least give it a try, because you never know what you can do until you try. See you later, guys.